and welcome to the big show. I'm your host, Jerk, and how's everybody doing? It's nearly the weekend, or maybe it's Monday. You know, I have no idea because I don't know when you'll watch this, and we're approaching a year of the world being on its head, so I've just lost all sense of time. And not just a couple blocks from our studio is Dodger Stadium, where the vaccine is being dished out, and I'm just waiting for my turn. But in the meantime, I've got an itch. An itch only a Kraken can scratch. And so we're continuing our countdown to 200 Krakens with today's guest and very longtime friend of the show. In fact, the very first Kraken ever posted all the way back January 7th, 2020. I'm not going to make you wait. Let's just bring him out here. It's the Tech Tree Tier 7 U.S. Navy Destroyer, the Chewbacca of DACA. Give it up for Fletcher. I'm sure longtime viewers of the show aren't surprised as I have long espoused my adoration for this ship, which explains its Elite XP quickly approaching the 3 million mark. But this is actually its first appearance since Kraken 147. So let me get the commander and modules up on the big screen. No surprises here. We've got Wild Bill Halsey, inspired by Starsky and Hutch. I mean, Sim City and Old Bay seasoning. Delicious for destroyers and seafood. And as you can see, I focus my ship on one thing and one thing only. Shooting city sheriffs. Say that five times fast. I am a firm believer that if I can, I need to have my finger holding down the trigger. As you can see right here. And as you watch, no, your eyes do not deceive you. That is indeed me switching to AP. You see, there is a time in every destroyer's life where its body starts to go through changes and they realize shooting HE only is a mistake. There are all sorts of juicy soft spots on the broadside of battleships that your AP can do more reliable damage to. And I don't just mean the superstructure. I mean above the belt, a flat bow, the stern. So as you go through these changes, understand it's perfectly normal to feel confused and excited at first. So experiment, and then you can emerge the beautiful butterfly that was trapped inside that cute caterpillar. A couple things I want to mention real quick. You'll notice at the beginning of all that I left a long smokescreen. The Fletcher smokescreen can be huge, so take advantage of that fact and make it big if you can. Also, I don't know if my username is just getting more recognized, but for some reason the division on the blue team has been pinging our team to protect me incessantly, which if it's due to me being recognized, that's flattering, thank you. And while flattery can get you everywhere in the comments section, in game it's just kind of annoying. So <laughs> let's keep it under control. Now I'm going to hunt down this Kagero as I don't want them to slip out the back and become a real pain for our team, let alone a distraction. Critical engine damage! My twist and track is telling me just about everything I need to know. They're still in their smoke, but I'm guessing this Kagero will have its torps again soon, so I need to be prepared for that. And in game right now, I was confused as I couldn't figure out how I was spotted, but this Kagero must be using the target acquisition system instead of the concealment mod. A bold and unexpected strategy. But there are those torps. So I'm using the terrain to control where they come from. And then I'm just going to back up and then go get this Kagero real quick. And that will be ship number two. Engine boost activated. If you're wondering why I pop my engine boost there, let me tell you. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I was thinking I was going to have to go chase them down, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that'll be ship number two, and to celebrate, we can stop at the local pub here for a little gin and tonic. Just squeeze in the lime. 
I don't need a picnic on the rim of my drink. But our crew doesn't have much time for rest and relaxation as we've got a big situation brewing. Our ships remaining at B are going to be overrun, so we need to get back there as soon as possible. And I am praying to Poseidon that our ships down here do not get tunnel vision and try to all go chase down that synop to the north. So I've pinged B a couple times, and my team says affirmative, so we will see if they actually mean it. And right now, I've got a choice going on in my head that I'm calculating real quick. Do I want to go along the north side of the islands in the hopes that I can catch their destroyer? Or do I want to go along the south side and try to provide support for my teammates? And I end up opting to go to the south, partially inspired by my hopes that I could help sink this Geniza now. But our teammate takes care of it just fine on their own. So I'm going to ping B again, and I'm going to look over my shoulder. I want to see the health of that Synop, because I'm thinking, please don't let it be too healthy, or our guys are just going to keep chasing it. But it is very weak, so I'm confident that my team is indeed heading to B. There are the remainders of the Red Fleet's battleships. So, a good thing that I came down this way. We can also infer that the Red Destroyer is on B, and I just checked to see what it was, and it's an Akatsuki, as B is getting capped, and there is a big serving of sea sausages coming through the B channel. Much respect for our Richelieu barreling in, and respect is so rare, if you were to look it up in a dictionary, you wouldn't even find it. It is going to cost them their ship, but maybe that's what inspired these Red Battleships to turn in. We will never know. But I will turn this away and send my own sea sausages in on a platter and begin to drop my smoke so I can do what the Fletcher does best, using its guns. As much as I would love to fly in there and just wreck them all, I'm not in Le Fantasque, so I, I won't be attempting that. Instead... I will turn out a little and get my smoke around these islands so I can have hard cover for any torpedoes as well as an exit in case things start to get precarious. And this will bring us to the Frank Reynolds portion of the program where I just start blasting. This whole sequence may look a little bit like uh, pure chaos, but there is a method to this madness. If I see the destroyer, I shoot at that. If there is a battleship without a fire, I shoot at that until it has one. Once it gets one, I start shooting the other battleship until it gets a fire. If the first has put their fires out, then I keep shooting them until they get more. So that Bismarck had used its damage con, and I believe here, yeah, I got another fired on it right there. There's the Akatsuki, so let's focus that. There are the torps we were concerned with, so good thing we have our hardcover option. And then we are going to continue to focus this Bismarck down. It has at least one fire on it that I've caused, maybe two, I can't keep track of everything. But you'll see, once again, I switch over to AP because it's giving me a flat broadside and I will be getting some pretty decent damage and it's going to end up being ship number three. So let's watch this and bask in the chaotic glory. <laughs> And all of that, and unbeknownst to me, the rest of our team was sunk. So it's just me, the blue Vocola, I hope I'm pronouncing that somewhat close to right, and we are against a destroyer, a battleship, and a cruiser. 
The Akatsuki pops up and our Vokula must have saved their reload booster because we can watch it make very short work of the Red Destroyer. And that reminds me, I really want to try a gunboat build on the Fantastic because those French guns, they are serious business. But back to what's in front of us, the Mayoko is barreling in and so the both of us will keep blasting away on it. It is going to cost our blue buddy their life. They are going to go down and I will have to finish the job. But because they were keeping this spotted, that allows me to get enough damage going over time. We should be in a pretty good situation. Make no mistake, this destroyer, the Fletcher, you do not want to just mess with its guns. I don't even know what we knocked out on it right there. That, why? <laughs> Where did that Miyoko shoot? Why did it shoot there? Whatever. Because of that, they've got a long reload. So I sink them. And now we've got to do some IQ stuff. Uh, actually, we should just do some math stuff. So it'll take me a minute to cap B. And let's see. So they're going to gain about 40 from A. We've got C, so that'll break even. So uh, let's see. About 40 seconds to cap B. Then we will be close. I mean, honestly, right here, this is, uh, this is just going to get me XP. Because we wouldn't have won on points either way. Their uh, key is headed to C, and they're going to stop that cap. There's just not enough time, I don't think, where the point differential would flip. And this is always the hardest part. I wish there was a counter or something that would tell us how how it was affecting the game, but whatever. That's a quality of life thing. Maybe we'll see it someday. I know at this point right now what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to sink this key. And my hope is that um, they haven't put HE into their guns. Because the key, that is an Amagi. And the Japanese HE hits insanely hard. So one salvo from that, I would be probably, probably be detonated. Maybe the key will be expecting me from the north. I'm using my twist and track to see where they are, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't thinking about how the whole team was pinging me at the beginning to protect me. That's a lot of pressure to not let them down. I mean, who knows if they're still watching this game. There's the key. They're going to fire, but they're going to fire AP. Of course, AP, it still hurts plenty, but I don't know. I think I would have switched. So I'm going to sail off on my merry way. Maybe fire a few more salvos a few more times. But it looks like they're going to be taking these corps. Uh, once they turn out a little bit more, they are definitely going to be taking enough of these corps. One more salvo from that key, but I can dodge that pretty easily. And that will be Kraken 196 in the Fletcher. Let's check the scoreboard. 3,603 XP for a very good game with the Fletcher. Let's roll the credits and not a bad showing from either team. A pretty fun match after a morning of uh, less than enjoyable games. So that'll do it for this one. Questions, comments, nicknames for your commanders, put them below. If the Fletcher is the night time to the right time, hit like. If you can't go for that, no can do, hit dislike. Don't change that dial, we're still counting down to 200, so hit subscribe. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll get out there for another one, and we'll talk soon.